Welcome to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato with the talented Mary Gamba. Uh, Mary, let's let everyone know how the great series Lessons in Leadership, which people watch every Sunday on News 12 Plus at 10 a.m., followed by Think Tank with Steve Adubato and Nicole Swenerton. This is our public television series. Um, and you can find us on a lot of other platforms. First, tell people where they can find us. Then let's thank our very generous funders. So much great information to share. So if you're watching us right now on News 12 Plus, thanks for joining us. And you can also find us on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, and on Apple Podcasts. I'd also like to thank all of our great underwriters. We have New Jersey Sharing Network. We have Seton Hall University and the Bacino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University. Prager Metis. We have Gibbons PC, the International Union of Operating Engineers, and Valley Bank. And I'd like to plug one more thing. You can go to our website, stand-deliver.com. You'll see it right there on screen. And you can get some great articles, see past episodes. So uh, there's a ton of valuable information there as well. Did you plug the Sharing Network? Uh, yes, I did, but I'll say it again. And the New Jersey Sharing Network. I think I did. Okay, and they're involved in organ tissue donation. Hey, um, listen, he's a National League fan. I believe he's still obsessed with the St. Louis Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken, which makes absolutely no sense. He is my leadership guru. He is my partner and friend, and uh, we are honored to have him on Lessons in Leadership. He's Larry Downs. Let's put him on camera if we could. Larry Downs is the chairman and CEO, excuse me, the retired chairman and CEO. Oh, yeah, one little detail, retired chairman and CEO of New Jersey <laughs> Resources. Also a board member over at uh, Horizon Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Great to see you, my friend. Steve, how are you? Good to see you, too. And you, too, Mary. Yeah. Larry, Larry, what is it that we've known each other for 20 years and you've never looked more relaxed? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. It might have to do with the fact that I retired about 15 months ago, and uh, my life right now is um, uh, is really focused more on our family, and uh, and in particular our two uh, grandchildren, Brian and Evan. So, let's put things in perspective. Yeah, you became the CEO of New Jersey Resources, a major uh, natural gas energy company. We're we're doing we continue to do a leadership academy at New Jersey Resources. Uh, Larry opened that door and the great team there has facilitated it since Larry has stepped down as the CEO. Uh, Steve Westenhoff been the CEO there right now. Let me ask you this, Larry. You were a very, very young man when you became the CEO. Younger than 40, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 37 to be exact, 37 and a half, yes, so. Okay, you, were you the CFO before that? I was the CFO. I joined the company in 1985, so I had you know almost a 35-year career there. And the first 10 years were spent on the financial side. I became a CFO in 1990. And at the time, finance was my passion; it still is today. But um, uh, but you know, I did that role for about five years before I became a CEO. It's very rare, and you know, because the uh, executive coaching we do and, and and leadership development, it's very rare. And I work with a fair number of clients at our company, Stand and Deliver. Look at our website, you'll see the work we do. It's very rare that a CFO moves to becoming the CEO. A, how difficult was the transition? B, let's talk about um, why you had to move from being largely a numbers leader to a strategical, tactical, practical, innovative, worlds apart the jobs? Uh, worlds apart, but but your your initial point is is right on because in in my role as CFO, and I remember that's 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 more than twenty five years ago now, and and the world was a very different place, and finance was quite frankly a, um, a different place from where we are today, but my experience had been you know numbers, investor relations, uh, all of that, um, and when I became uh, CEO, and it was on, um, <laughs> it's a long story that's interesting to probably only me. Um, but there wasn't a, a long um, a long period of time to get ready for it. I became CEO of our main subsidiary on uh, on March eighth, nineteen ninety five, and uh, and four days later, my our CEO at the time retired. He uh, resigned for another position, and um, I ended up with the uh, with the job. So How great story now. Scary at the time. <laughs> How scary. Well, remember, the financial background is you're used to uh, you're used to seeing the world through numbers and plans and budgets and investors and all of that. And I realized very quickly that that was a very uh, narrow slice of the world. Um, and so 
um, I immediately went out spending time in the field, you know, talking on the phones with our, our CSRs and uh, our meter readers. Customer and service reps? Customer service reps, sorry about that. Um, and realized pretty quickly that um, uh, there was so much more to uh, uh, the business than just the numbers. In fact, those numbers were meaningless without the actual understanding of what our employees, uh, our team were doing out there. Um, in fact, I, I, I developed a, um, an insight on leadership that quite frankly, uh, I carry to this day. Uh, and it said, everyone is a leader. Um, it's not just the people you know, at the top, but everyone in an organization to be successful as a leader. You believe, see, we're gonna have that discussion and Mary's gonna jump yeah. in here. Every, yeah. You don't mean this as a bumper sticker cliche, everyone's oh, no. a leader. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I'm gonna put it in my office as a motivational thing. Yeah. You actually believe and have lived by everyone's a leader. Before Mary jumps in, make the case using, we talked about, Larry and I talk about this all the time with Mary, a real practical example of everyone's a leader. Because I always argue, Larry, aren't there just some doers? Aren't there just people who wait to be told what to do? And they're good managers, they're good executors, but are they really leaders? Go ahead, Larry. The answer is yes, they're leaders. And, I, and, I, and I'll give you an example. Um, as I said to you in the beginning of my career, I, I made sure that I was getting out in the field. And so uh, one, of the, one of the things that I never forgot, it was actually about six weeks, it was Memorial Day weekend of 1995. And I was out with our meter readers, okay? And I'm watching what they do. And at the time their quota was 300 meter reads a day, okay? So they decided it would be interesting to see the new uh, CEO uh, read some meters. You know, I, my, um, my performance tracked to about 47, okay? Wow. Um, but I think the, the other example was um, I went out with one of our field people. It was actually later on uh, that year. It was cold outside. Um, and it was late. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I went out with them. Uh, we had a no-heat call had come into, the, uh, come into the call center. Went out with them. That individual went out, knocked on the door, fixed the heat, um, and it was really at that moment that I realized that that individual's name was Al Luster. He was the leader of the company. Uh, I thought and not reflected, Larry Downs. No, no, no. Larry Downs could do nothing for the customer. Uh, in fact, bad things could happen if I was trying to fix somebody's <laughs> heat. Um, seriously, but when I started to think more deeply about that, and as I spent more time with employees you know, with our CSRs, who have the customer service reps who are, um, you know, just so, so special, uh, our meter readers at every level of the organization, not only in operations, but also in accounting and, and all of those areas, um, I, I found out that, that leadership is a much broader uh, concept because the way those individuals perform and the way they perform to this day is really the difference between success and failure. And that if you looked at the list, the numbers are at the bottom of the list. The numbers are only a reflection of what every individual in the organization does. And that's what leadership is all about. Wow. And I, I, I wanna make one other quick point. Is sure. as, I, as I began to carry that message out that everyone is a leader, oh yeah, there was cynicism about that at first. There was um, like, I'm a leader? And yeah, you are a leader. And as we, as I continued to pursue that, um, people began to think differently about themselves and the role in the organization. So to answer your initial question, yes, I believe strongly that everyone is a leader. But, but you have to, Mary, jump in here. Don't you have to create a culture, Mary, yeah. where, this is so interesting, <sighs> Larry had 20-something years, whatever it was, um, to do what he did together with others at, at the company to create a culture, you know, culture, what's the expression um, uh, that uh, Drucker had? Uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast every day, whatever, okay. So culture, Larry and his team worked to create a culture where everyone was expected to be a leader. I've said to Mary, we have great managers, great executors, great producers, they're talented. But there are times I ask myself, have I created a culture? And I'm not gonna make this about myself because I know I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Have I created a culture, and Mary's gonna jump in and share this, where too many times our people wait for Steve to, and we have a small organization, hey, Steve will come up with a new idea, a new innovation. Most of them stink, but some of them are pretty good. And then we'll execute. We'll get it done. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mary, I want, a, I want a leadership, innovative culture. And she said, well, you can want that, but for a long time, you've been the chief innovation officer and you've glommed a lot of that up. Mary, jump in and then Larry, come back. 
Sure mm -hmm. thing. And it, it's funny, Steve, because you had said, oh, you know, Larry in the 20 some odd years, and I believe you were probably referring to the 20 some odd years that he was CEO, that he created that culture. I'd like to argue that it was probably the 35 years that he was with the organization because, you know, and Larry, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'd like to believe that, you know, when you started at, there at New Jersey Resources, you saw yourself as a leader and that's part of, you know, who you became later on and then you created that culture. But how do you get, as it, going back to Steve's point, how do you get others in the organization? I know you said there was some cynicism and some people said, well, I'm just a meter reader. I'm the person that picks up the phone and how could I really make a difference? How do you get buy-in from those people? Because I do think that's some of the hardest things, as Steve said, that we even face here at our small organization is people don't see themselves as, hey, I'm gonna be the idea guy. I'm just the doer guy or, or girl. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you get- We have those? an all woman team, except for our great team behind the scenes, with Frank, Elvin, mm -hmm. Scarlett, Sylvester, but they're all women. They're all women, and, and and they'll say that leaders leadership's not in my job description. X is producing is this is that is. Go ahead, Mary. Finish. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So the main question yeah. was, how do you get the buy-in? How do you get them to? Of course, they could do it because you tell them that they're leaders. But how do you get mm -hmm. them to truly believe it and become leaders in their own right? Well, let me let me be candid with you. I mean, it's a great story, you know, 25 years ago. It's a great story to tell now. But the reality is mm -hmm. right off the bat, it was an abject failure because of what you just stated. Um, we went to work on trying to create, uh, you know, the best vision and mission and all of that. And it failed. And the reason it failed is that there was no connection between the reality of what our employees were doing day to day and the aspiration that we were putting out there, the vision, mission, and wanting everybody to, lead, to be a leader. The, the really uh, transformational event happened in 1997 uh, when we decided to uh, really change the way we measured success the way for, away from primarily financial metrics and went to what we call our commitment to stakeholders. Now, I will tell you today, it's all in vogue. Everybody focuses on stakeholders. But back in 1997, that was a different, um, that, that, that was a different concept. And what that did for us is we were, I was able to um, convince the team, you know, that we were going to hold ourselves to a higher standard. It wasn't just about the bottom line. It was going to be customers, employees, regulators, communities, uh, public policymakers, all of that. And we were going to uh, basically align our performance metrics with the stakeholder concept. That's what really uh, brought the um, everyone is a leader concept to life. Without that, it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to work. And I'll tell you, I'll throw in a uh, plug for our team. They just won their, now I'm, now I'm retired, so there's nothing to do with me, never did. They just won their 15th JD Power Award in the last 18 years. So, but I believe it was fundamentally changing the way we defined and measured success is what is what really brought the uh, concept of everyone as a leader. Let, let me push this a little further. Sure. Larry, you recognize this book? Yeah, absolutely. I okay. yes, absolutely. Okay. I believe Jim Collins um, actually came and spoke. Larry got him in to speak to the team at New Jersey Resources. And Correct. Jim Collins' book, which we talk about, Larry and I have been talking about this for years. Good to great. And there's a connection here, trust me. One of Jim Collins' concepts in Good to Great. Uh, why some companies make the leap and others don't. By the way, half the companies mentioned here is great, don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. That being said, which is also true in a 1984 classic book, In Search of Excellence by Peters and Waterman. You remember? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Of, they don't exist. Those were the great companies in 84. Innovate or die. That being said, yeah. in this book, one of the concepts that Collins talks about that really goes to what you're saying is not only do you need to put, Larry is as the CEO when he was a CEO, or I'm the, I'm the bus, he said everything's a bus, uh, the organization's a bus, right, Larry? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And absolutely. we're the bus drivers, we're the bus right. drivers. Right. And he said right. the, key, right. the key is to not only know where the bus is going, why the bus is going there, when the bus needs to get there, it's strategic and it's tactical. There's a question here, trust me. But you have to have, quote, the right people in the right seats on the bus. And absolutely. here's my question to you. When you identified people, who either couldn't or wouldn't, or some combination of the two, step up and be the leaders you needed them to be. And you've and I have been having this offline conversation for years. Colin said you need to escort them off the bus because this bus can't succeed with people not stepping up. We've had to face that as well. Were you ever afraid or uncomfortable 
escorting people off the bus, letting them go, because frankly, you couldn't be excellent if you had them. Um, absolutely. I want to make something very clear. It's, uh, uh, it was not a fairy tale, and there were hard decisions that had to be made about individuals who simply weren't going to get it. If I had to uh, uh, offer a criticism of myself in this area, is in there were instances, instances unfortunately, that I waited too long, because it's not easy to, uh, to do that. But the reality is, um, had the hard decisions ultimately not been made there, all of the other things we were aspiring to you to with the commitment to stakeholders and everyone as a leader and all that, that never would have happened. Did you care? Did. Mary, uh, the great one of the chapters in Lessons in Leadership, which Larry does not have in his uh, study right there, that's okay. Uh, one of the chapters uh, is <laughs> Great leaders sometimes piss people off. The great no. quote from oh. Colin Powell. No, <laughs> Larry, great leaders sometimes piss people oh, yeah. off. Uh, Mary, what have we always said about Larry? Other than being a great leader, he's a really what kind of guy? uh down to earth and uh forthcoming and honest and and, and a nice guy and a nice larry guy is a nice guy mm -hmm. and larry here's the question did you care if people were pissed off at you because you made a tough decision and they had to leave or they weren't going to get that raise or they weren't going to get that promotion did you hesitate because you are such a quote nice guy i'm not nearly as nice as you are as mary right. knows my question is was that one of your problems as a leader Absolutely. I mean, no one, no one likes to deliver bad news, but when the focus with the, with the focus on the commitment, which, which I was absolutely, you know, just completely focused on all the time. Okay. That wasn't going to be realized. Um, if, if I was hesitating to make the, the tough decisions, is that fun? No, that's not fun. Did you and, care that I, people were mad at you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I you mean, did. You took it personally. Absolutely, because you know I, I would think about um, you know what's going to happen to their lives, and I would I would use it as an example. Of where did I go wrong? I would take personal responsibility for it. How did this happen? How did we for get their? Here? Wait a minute, for yeah, their absolutely. failure, you take absolutely. responsibility. Absolutely, what? they screwed up, yeah. not you. That's well, that's not. I'm responsible as CEO. You're responsible for the entire organization, um, and it's when something goes wrong, whatever it is, you're responsible. And you know, to say, well, I didn't do it, somebody else did. That's not leadership. That's being a phony, quite frankly. Mary, all yours. Oh, thank you, Steve. And one thing, Larry, that we've talked a lot about over the years is sustainability, and not just in you know the world and globally, but also sustainability and leadership. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know you have a very succinct viewpoint on what that means, your four pillars to uh, sustainability. Talk a little bit about that and what that means. Well, basically, starting with it again, that high level concept of everyone is a leader, then you really have to bring that down into the uh, into the organization. Uh, one of the ways we did that was all, every one of our metrics tied back to one of the commitment to stakeholders, which was tied to the everyone is a leader. Um, but there also needed to be a um, there needed to be um, a concept that tied it all together. And so we we matched our everyone is a leader with the, uh, the very simple uh, definition of leadership, that leadership is about learning, teaching, and sharing. Uh, and going back to the thought of um, everyone being a leader, everyone has experiences that they can, uh, can be used to, uh, uh, for learning purposes. They can use it to teach others, and sharing is the glue that brings to that uh, together. And I, and I would say, when I would go to uh, employee meetings, do me a favor, learn, one new fact about the company every single day and share that with somebody around you. When I first came to the company, I was completely overwhelmed with the information. I was 27 years old at the time. Um, and I said to myself, I was gonna learn one new fact about the company uh, every single day. That's where that concept first came to me. But, but engaging people with one another and creating a, um, uh, a culture uh, where sharing is encouraged that's really what was going to drive the uh, was going to drive the uh, the leadership, and it could it could be anything. It, you know, I learned more from meter readers, the CSRs, the field people about what the business was ultimately all about in a way that I could never learn in a in a conference room or at a, at a board meeting or you know reading a financial statement. One of the things about Larry Downs, by the way, Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba, lessons in leadership with our, our good friend um, and colleague and mentor of mine for many years, uh, Larry Downs who is the, quote, retired chairman and CEO of New Jersey Resources. Larry, you've always been big on giving back, being a good corporate citizen, not just some 
rhetoric for you. You've lived it. You were the head of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. You mm -hmm. you're involved in, in so many state initiatives um, as a volunteer. Higher ed, my God, he was involved in higher ed restructuring. But w real quick, give me 30 seconds on, is it the Mercy Center? It's Mercy Center in Asbury Park, yes, yes. What is yes. it and why do you care? Well, ba basically the, the Mercy Center run by the uh, Sisters of Mercy, um, they're serving the poor in Asbury Park. They operate a, um, a school, the Sisters Academy. And, and after I retired, I, I had done enough kind of, you know, the kind of corporate stuff. Um, and I wanted to get involved directly with helping the poor. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. And, you know, go beyond just writing a check or something, uh, something like that. Um, the work that they do, that the sisters do, uh, and the volunteers do, though, is absolutely inspiring. And I'll also tell you that the same leadership techniques that you see here, um, stakeholders and all that, they're doing that and it works. And I would say it's getting even more value by helping people who need it. Now, uh, Larry also has a connection to the Heldrick Center at Rutgers yeah. University, right? Yeah, yeah, that great work being done there for the not only unemployed, but underemployed uh, in a special way with, to address some of the challenges with employment we're seeing because of the COVID situation. Yeah, so let's do this. In a couple of minutes we have left, Larry. Sure. I'm curious about something. Um, also on the Horizon Board, Horizon, one of our longtime supporters of our yeah, public broadcasting. Um, really great organization. Oh, so, yeah. I'm, curious, I'm sorry, you want to say something about Horizon? No, no, no. I mean, they are an example of uh, an organization really focused on that mission of healthcare and helping people. And, and I have just been so impressed with how they carry that out, because as we all know, there's a lot of uh, elements and aspects to uh, uh, healthcare. But uh, Horizon is, uh, I'm proud to be part of that team. Last question on my end. Sure. So leadership is also about connecting and communicating with people, whether it's an investor meeting. I worked with Larry for years as he was getting ready with his financial team for, uh, uh, in my coaching, uh, getting them ready for these investor relations committees, uh, these, these meetings where they, you know, you bring, need to bring investors on, you need to keep those who are on staying on, you need to give financial information, they would ask challenging questions, et cetera, et cetera. But you, real quick, you have evolved as a public communicator over the last 10 to 15 years to being a more persuasive, concise, effective public communicator and i'm not fishing here mm -mm. how have you done it uh realizing that when you are communicating and quite frankly you mary have had a role in that so i'm and i'm not just saying that to be nice to you but but one of the things that i that i learned um probably too, i was too like too far into my seo career than i would have liked but is it doesn't matter uh what you want to communicate it's what your audience needs to hear and learn. Um, and so if you're spitting a bunch of numbers at them, but there's no context as to what it means for them, you failed. Um, and I think that's a metaphor, not only for financial presentations, it's a metaphor for communications in life. By so the way, when you somebody should say to me, what do we do? We keep people warm in the winter. There's a thousand or more things that go on beyond that, but that's what we do. By the way, we were planning on a 15-minute interview with Larry. We were at 23 minutes. I just saw I'm sorry. Hey, uh, yeah. Not you. Hey, Larry, uh, and you have these questions that we've talked about for years that you use as a guidepost to prepare, right? Key questions? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What are absolutely. they? Real quick. Well, uh, basically, what is my main message? The other key one is uh, what do I want to the, uh, what, do we, what do I want my audience to, uh, to do and what's going to motivate them? And if you use those, if you use those, you can speak to, to any organization or group persuasively. Larry, Period. now, which extraordinary leadership and communication coach and consultant introduced you to that concept? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that would be you, Steve. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact, and I have said to you, as you know, that you should build a workbook uh, around that because that will, and I will say this to all of your audience, get that. Uh, those three, well, six questions now, you will yeah. be able to speak to anyone. By the way, in chapter 24 of Lessons in Leadership, <laughs> um, it's actually the questions are in there, but they are embedded yes. and we'll have to make them more out front. Hey, Larry, um, yes. sorry for taking so much time of yours. Oh, please. Best, uh, your family, how many grandchildren? Uh, two, Brian and Evan. They're outside watching me do this right now. So, How big a part of your life are they after your very successful career as an executive? How important are they? 
Oh, oh, huge. They, uh, they keep me balanced. They're just, they're just wonderful. They're just wonderful. We're so proud of them and so blessed to have them. Larry Downs is our friend. And that's the only introduction I'm going to give him as we say goodbye. Hey, thanks, Larry. Stay safe, stay, stay safe, be well, and the best to you and your family. Great. Thanks so much, Steve. And Mary, thank you, too. This was fun. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back right after this. Yeah. This edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, is brought to you by Gibbons PC, the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, New Jersey Sharing Network, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is the Seton Hall story, one that comes to life every day on our campus. This is the place where great minds discover, innovate, collaborate, and find their true calling. This is the place where passion has a purpose, where learning inspires leading. The bonds we make, the values we teach, inspire our community to take heart and take action. This is Seton Hall University. This is what great minds can do. Hey, listen, this is how you know lessons in leadership is totally unscripted. Mary and I were going to talk about Larry behind his back, Larry Downs, and say all good things. Oh, my God. Larry, I love it. So, Larry, who is that? This is Evan. He's 18 months old. Himself. Oh, he is. And so who, just, who just ran away? Uh, Brian. Brian. Brian is four. He just turned four. So. And they, and by the way, when you're doing what you're doing in this so-called retirement, they're just always around. Oh, absolutely. They're the best. They're the best. So. What's the best thing about having grandchildren? Because you have children of your own, right? You have two, right? Well, you can take all of the lessons that you didn't know while you were going through <laughs> and you can apply them to the grandchildren so and, oh it is but so the, great i i used to, yeah, i love what my matter. parents always said the best thing about grandchildren is that you can give them back at the end of the day <laughs> well i'm on tape so i didn't want to say that but <laughs> None of that is true uh yeah. listen larry um there's no other way to end this show other than to say uh we really appreciate listen in all seriousness on the 20 years plus that I've known Larry, we've had more conversations beyond leadership, truthfully about family. About family. Absolutely. Absolutely. The connection between leadership, and this is not some corny segue, the connection no. between leadership and family is, finish it, Larry. Uh, remember, it's not just about work. Work is a part of life. Uh, and, and making sure that your team has the tools to manage not only work, but their lives be more successful. And that involves really uh, creating a, a personal connection to what you do every day and, and a sense of pride is what you're doing every single day. But, um, Mary, we have like eight or 10 employees. They have thousands. And Larry's trying to get to know their families. I yeah. love it. I love it. And that little guy, I love him. He, he could be interviewed himself. Hi, big guy. Yeah. See? You got Hi. Uh, what, Steve, one quick thing. I didn't. Real quick, 30 uh, seconds. I, I talked a lot about the company. I did not thank the more than 1,000 women and men. It was actually you know, well more than 1,000 that I had the opportunity to work with over 25 years. I would not have what I have today if it wasn't for them. And I will always be proud and grateful for what they've done. They're out there right now right. doing their jobs. So they inspire Mary, me every day. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you both. Have a great Christmas, Look New Year, okay. holiday. But our people, the entire time we're talking, they're just staring at that beautiful kid. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's Evan, right? I am. That's Evan. That's Evan. Hi, Evan. The, the other one wanted he to went. negotiate to get on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, says, guys. We'll see you next time. Okay. Ahead, Thanks, guys. Appreciate Bye. it. Lessons Take in care. leadership, it's out of control. You can see. We'll see you next time. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, is brought to you by... Gibbons PC, the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, New Jersey Sharing Network, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ On Air, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.